Hi, my name is Michael Holtis, and I'm going to show you a test Dr. Mahmoud had us do. So what this basically does is we use the dragon board to make a frequency divider. And if you notice here, this is displaying the output from uh, PT5, which is the uh, buzzer pin. And also it steadily counts up how many times it triggers on the IRQ pin. So whenever IRQ happens, it interrupts the seven segment display. It figures out what the LCD is supposed to display, which is the frequency that's coming out of PT5. And then it tells the information to display on the LCD. Now, if we increase the frequency, you can actually watch this on an oscilloscope. Get a good frequency dialed in. There we go. So the bottom signal is the signal coming out of the function generator. Make sure you plug it into uh, TTL logic a section of the function generator. The upper signal is actually the signal coming out of the PT5 pin. So actually if we want to change this we can actually by we can actually divide the frequency by four if we if we want by swapping these pins. So if you notice up here on the screen as I flip the, the dip switches the frequency is split in half. So right now it's half the frequency of what's in IRQ and now it's fourth and now it's about an eighth. The scale is messing with me some. So there are eight triggers of IRQ for each trigger of PTH. Now, we, uh, the, the last thing that we can do is, of course, this can actually be used, and since it's correctly connected, since it's connected to the, uh, the PT5 pin, put it on a less annoying frequency, you can actually hook in the PT5 jumper, and it'll generate a tone. And that time where it's stopping is actually where it has to update the LCD screen. So you can't get a completely long tone. So if we crank up the frequency to something really, really high, you'll actually notice that the seven segment is stuck, which means that it is constantly in IRQ. It's not able to even leave IRQ because it's being pulled so many times. Uh, and if we steadily decrease the frequency, it'll, it'll finally have enough time to exit IRQ. Now also you'll notice that the seven segment display is inaccurate. The reason this is inaccurate is because of overflow. The counter word that we're using is going over uh, its value, and so it, has to, it defaults to a lower value. Okay, one thing that I forgot is the details about this plot. So as we increase the frequent input frequency, there's a certain frequency at which the microcontroller can't trigger PT5 any faster. And I'm going to demonstrate that up here. So again, the bottom is our input signal, and the top is our output signal. And if you notice that the output signal is slightly shifted relative toward the uh, input signal, so it's slightly out of phase. And as you steadily increase this frequency, keep doing single sweeps. It steadily starts sliding over. And eventually, once we get over a certain frequency, that top frequency, the output won't change. So you notice the bottom frequency is increasing but the top frequency is incapable of doing so. And uh, that's basically because the, uh, the microcontroller can't keep up. So it's calling IRQ, but it's always calling it late. Um, and at that point, you end up with a stable frequency where you can't get any more frequency, any, any more frequency out of the device.